Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today I'm going to do a subject that I really love to do from time to time. One of my favourite things to paint in oil or in watercolour is that of a Thames barge. They're a revered sailing craft that plied their trade up and down the east coast of England uh, in the last century and many of them, well not many, a good number of them have been preserved and, and are used for racing each other during the course of set barge matches during the course of each year. I've been lucky enough to be on some of the stewarding boats within some of these races. These are magnificent ships or boats that uh, are out there and yeah what can I say let's get straight into it anyway. This one is one called Dawn. And it sits on the mud, in this particular picture, on the beaches of West Mercy, which is right up on the uh, east coast of England. And uh, I went there a little while ago and took some photos and some sketches. I've painted it several times. It's just one I love to come back to now and again and just have another crack at it. So let's drive straight in. Let's see what happens. Right, first and foremost, now a Thames barge, roughly speaking, is square. And I say square, I mean the top to the bottom and the length is about the same. So let's just position where we want this boat. And I want it quite high on the beach, so there's a nice lot of beach coming down. But I want it to have enough room to be in the picture here. So I'm going to actually make that the back of it just about there. And maybe just a bit further there. And let's make that the front uh, about there, I think. Okay, let's do this one again. And let's just put a mark there. So there's the length of my boat. Now, I could make it a little bit more, but I think that's sufficient for the purposes of this job. Now, whatever that measurement is on there, I need to turn this the other way. <laughs> And make it a little bit forward of centre, roughly about there. And I think that there is where the um, mast should be. Now that is a little bit too forward. So I am going to put move that there and move that there. Almost the same, but different. <laughs> but anyway, let's go for it. Let's take that all the way up to the top there. And let's come down now. These masts split. And if you're watching this and you know a darn sight more about Thames barges than I ever will. If I say something wrong, please put it in the comments and let me know. Because I love to learn more. And I enjoy these painting these no end of times. So there we go. Let's put that in. And it's got a little white bit on top with a little pennant on the very top there. And... I don't propose, what I will not be doing is putting all the rigging in. I don't think we need to do that. So continuing on, this vessel was sitting on the mud, but it was on a higher aspect on my horizon line because the beach slopes away from it to where I was standing and it was useful because it gave this a great sense of um, presence in the composition and that's what drew me to it. Now this image, the those little shapes on the side of the vessel are, I think they're like bow or the big plates of wood that are lowered down to help stabilize this vessel when it's uh, under full sail and working. And the little bit on the front there was the spitzel which uh, made this a spit bow uh, barge. Uh, in a sense, I think I understand it right, it was allowing it to carry more foresail uh, when it would needed to be and uh, it uh, just gave it more sail but the reason uh, that those plates are on the side is that essentially this boat is a shallow draft flat bottomed vessel and of course it has no keel and having no keel makes it very unstable with a lot of sail uh, to keep it upright so those plates were lowered into the water when the thing was working out at sea and uh, allowed it to stay the right way up which is quite helpful i think <laughs> anyway the flat bottom it allowed all these vessels to go up the rivers to deposit uh, the goods that were needed in trays and whatever a lot of coal 
uh, wool and all sorts of uh, stuff was actually transported by these and they were really useful vessels and there were hundreds and hundreds of them one upon a time and I understand that they actually used to be manned by just a small you know father son outfit maybe the dog and I think sometimes the wife um, or a wife was uh, there to look after the food and other bits and pieces I don't know for sure but as I said earlier I'm sure somebody out there knows a lot more about them than I do please put it in the comments as I've suggested the backdrop to all of this is a massive amount of boats and vessels both fishing commercial and yachts and together they just made the whole scene come together and they really made that the Thames barge was the center piece of the whole image and it really worked well I've just turned the painting upside down for a very very good reason I'm going to be using this Escoda large mop brush I'm not sure if it's animal hair or synthetic but it really does act like a squirrel mop and it serves its purpose extremely well somebody recently sent it to me and I'm really grateful that they did it's a great brush now having said all that I'm going to start doing this sky it's extremely important I'm using ultramarine violet and I'm using indigo and some vermilion making a lot of it because this is the most important aspect of the whole painting get this wrong and it's not going to work so I'm delivering a lot of color right at the start so that it's really dark at that baseline now I turned it over so that the paint can gently run away towards me but I want the top of the sky to be quite pale and I'm allowing the bee to stay active if you leave that and you let that dry up you've lost it so keep that bead active and now I'm just going to punch some real dark colors just to emphasize the moodiness of that sky not forgetting it will dry up lighter so it may look dark but it won't be this dark once it's all done so I'm going to turn it over now and let that start to settle some of the paint will come back towards the horizon line in the meantime I'm just using this quite dirty brownish uh, sienna mix uh, with the mud and that on the foreground of the you know all the mud and that at, on the sea now I stupidly touched that bit of sky I think I'm gonna get away with it but it's annoying I'm not putting too much color into this I want to save that for later on so this is gonna dry up now and I'm gonna let it dry thoroughly and I actually not only let it dry naturally but I use the hair dryer on it once I was sure the paint was not going to move. So don't use a hairdryer on it straight away or you'll wreck that lovely um, sky color. Wait until it is almost dry so it's not going to move and then use the hairdryer on it just to finish it off. And that way you know your painting is dry ready for the next layers. I'm using the beautiful terracotta colors of vermilion, oranges and different colors to set, uh, set up these folded sails. When these vessels are out sailing, this is the most iconic thing to see. I call them my spitfires of the sea. They are that iconic. They are beautifully shaped, wonderfully designed, and those sails are just to die for. And it was one of our, I've got to say, one of our greatest landscape painters of the last century, uh, a revered gentleman by the name of Edward Sego, who... Uh, did and so many paintings of these boats and made them I think just single-handedly made them so famous in artwork and he did a tremendous job and to see any of his work featuring these is just a delight I'm laying in well I'm not actually doing anything I'm actually lifting I'm lifting out the paint on the shed roof I found or realized there was a shed roof then I wanted to lift it and give it a bit of light against the sky I didn't want to go hard on it because I would have wrecked it so it's very very gentle now I put in the mast and I'm putting in some other masts for some of these vessels on the mud in front of the barge they are merely yachts that have just sat there and although this is a muddy or sandy surface it's soft in places but you can traverse it. A little bit of grass and uh, debris going on up on the top, on the top of the shoreline there. And beyond that are houses, shops, and a car park, which is where I was parked. But this day was a monumentally um, uh, cloudy, stormy day. It was stormy one second, and it was 
completely sunny for the next you just get out and do a start doing a plein air and then you'd have to abandon it and run for cover before you got soaked hailstones and everything was just thrown down and then a minute later as i say it was all nice again and you got out there and it great gave way to all these wonderful sunny and cloudy situations that i'm painting for you now and i'm just putting in a little bit of um lovely sort of water and i put that in purely as a leading line there was little watery puddles on the mud from the ebb tide but i wanted to make more of them so that you could actually have a leading line that made you sort of go all the way up around and lead you straight into the Thames barge. It's a great divisive way to keep people interested. Now I've honed in on this little area of the painting where I wanted to put in the bits of details for some of the small vessels on the shoreline. I use cobalt uh, turquoise on the um, tarpauling and on front of one of these boats. It's a great color. I've only recently started using it but I'm so glad I found it and started using it. It's a great, great color. And I put a little bit of uh, transparent orange on the boat with a little bit of dark in there, a bit of blue, a bit of indigo, I think it was, just to color down that wooden boat of the yacht. And I'm putting some cerulean on the tarpaulin that's covering this white yacht. And a little bit of the dark color just to suggest the base of it, sitting on the mud um, and below the waterline. Now for this great big fishing boat, and I'm sure it's a massive fishing boat, but it's dwarfed by the Thames barge in front of it. And um, not just because of size, obviously because of the uh, perspective that it is that much closer to where that boat is. But I've just merely laid in some darks and I'm suggesting the little island area that's uh there's water between it i don't know this area very well i've got to say I'm not sure if this is a an island surrounded by water or just um well i'm not quite sure what it is but i do believe there is a little road bridge in the far distance which i do put in later on in the painting that joins the two bits together but again there was full of yachts all placed around the water's edge there all waiting for their owners to come down on a good day to take them out and enjoy them. And indeed, the area far to my right-hand side was just full of boats, all beached and on the mud. Uh, as I came there, the tide was pretty much out. Now I'm suggesting a little bit more detail in the mud. And this is where I'm using, and I forgot to say this right at the beginning, I'm using very rough 300-pound uh, not 300 GSM, but Arches paper, 300 pound, very, very heavy weight, rough paper. And it allows this semi-dry brush to skip right the way across and just deposit color or pigment on the high bumps of the paper. And you get this beautiful broken effect in the mud or the sand. And it just it's just a great way of doing it. Uh, you can't do this so easily on not paper and almost impossible to do anything like it on hot pressed or smooth paper. So you do need to think about what you want to do and use the appropriate paper, rough, not or smooth, depending on how you want your image to look. But because it's a heavyweight paper, it allows me so much more working time as it stays damp longer and allows me to do a lot more mixes. Putting those dark areas around the little water features, however, lifts those water features and makes them stand out a little bit more. Put a little bit of shadow underneath the two boats there on the mud just to give them uh, a degree of sitting on the mud and they're sort of joined to terra firma as it were. And I'm just losing some of that white space that was left between the sky and the mud and just breaking that up with one or two bits of debris, flotsam, jetsam, whatever it might be. And I'm using now some pure uh, white gouache to lay in the poles and the parts of the vessel that really need to stand out. It would You could have masked them, but it would never be quite as good. So I chose to put on uh, the gouache and lay it straight in and do to define these areas as I needed to. I added a little bit of warmth in there as well, just a little bit of orange and yellow, just to warm up the white a bit. 
instead of it being a start white. Suggesting some boats in the background, some masts that are sticking out, and also the side of the vessel. The, uh, I don't quite know what you call that part, but it's just a really nice part. The front spit as well. And I will lay in some of the rigging, not much, but I want to keep going over. Now, the thing about the white gouache against a dark surface, it does in a way start to dry up and lose itself. So some of it I have had to go back in and reinforce it moving forward. But it's not a big deal. You just got to be a little bit sure of your brush and the marks you're making that you cover over the same ground. Here you can see I've added more to the side of the boat. But already that boat is starting to stand out magnificently against that sky. That's why that sky at the beginning was so, so important to get that value right. So that when I did all this, those little bits of mast that I'm putting in all over the place now, there are tons of them, more than I could count. So I just kept tapping away with them until they came right. But uh, I just continued and just added little bits of detail. Now, one can say that you can put too much gouache in. Yes, you can. Of course you can. But I think on this regard, it needed it. Everywhere I put it, it was needed to be just to suggest all the forms that were, would otherwise be lost. And with the final bit and the closure of this painting, what painting of a seaside or uh, area like this wouldn't be complete without some seagulls in it? And I did put quite a few in, I've got to admit. But I enjoyed them. I enjoyed the look that they give. They give some form of life to the painting. But one thing I would always say is try and remember to put an odd number in. I don't know if that's because I did a lot of photography and it's something that I learned that odd numbers look better. And I'm sure one of you out there will count them up and say, hey, you didn't do it odd. You got them wrong. But anyway, I digress. I'm putting a few extra highlights into these poles just to reinforce them. And I'm also putting some shadows into the sails that are folded just to give them a little bit more presence and the one at the back as well. But with that, you know, I'm done. I really have enjoyed painting this for you this week. It's a subject matter that I love to return to time and time again. And I never get bored with it because they're such an iconic vessel. So with that in mind, sign your picture, have fun, have a go yourselves, and I'll catch you all soon. Bye-bye. So I do hope that you've enjoyed this painting. I did try and set out to make this a quick one. And they never do. I'm so sorry about that. I try so hard. Anyway, that's said and done. It is what it is. I'm going to now peel the tape off and reveal it as I do like to do. And I think this really sets a painting off when this is done. So let's just take this tape off. Covered in bits of tissue and what have you. Being very careful when you do this, the painting really should be dry before you do it, or you can tear into the fibers and rip through. Oh, that's a shame. Hoping that would be a clean, crisp edge. Unfortunately, the paint bled. Can't be helped, it happens. It does mean to say that I can't mat this with a white border when I come to frame it. It's gonna to have to go right up to the painting. One of those things, sometimes, very often you get away with it, sometimes you don't. But I do like to see this anyway. I do like to see this nice edge to it. You've got an idea of the painting. So I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoy painting it for you. I always enjoy painting, whether it's for you or for myself. I just enjoy painting. So. I hope you got something from it. I'm sure you did. And if you've got any queries about it, any comments to make, put them in the comment section below, please. And any ideas you have that you'd like to see covered in a future video from me, put those suggestions also in your comments below. They're welcome. I'll answer each and every one. I can't say that I'll paint everything that you suggest, but by all means, suggest it and I'll make a, a list up and that I can plow my way through over time. Thank you again to all my recent subscribers and thank you to all of those of you who are already subscribed to the channel. Put a like to it. The thumbs up bit 
share it with your friends let others see these videos i'm sure they'll get something from it and enjoy them too and above all if you're not a subscriber please consider subscribing to my channel all of these things the likes the shares and the subscriptions tell youtube or the algorithms within youtube that this is a good video that you enjoyed it and people are liking it and so it helps promote me and the channel and helps me to grow and in turn that allows me to possibly one day earn a little bit from it and pay for all the time and effort that goes into creating these films for you and on that score if you do want to get involved with help supporting the channel and by joining Patreon, by diving over or hitting the link below to the Patreon page, you'll get access to so much more than you see on YouTube. Now that said, um, they are longer videos, and but you can watch them in bits at a time, but you can follow them through. There are lots of things like reference material, tonal shots, line art, all these things go into it, but all of it takes time, takes effort, and cost money to produce so patrons there are helping me to support the channel and helping that grow so that i can create so much more quality content for you in the future uh, and i am really dedicated to both my youtube channel and my patreon channel i really am i feel that it is the way forward and as such i really want to get involved with it and not just become a five minute wonder so uh, it is worth you getting involved with patreon and i'm adding to it each month sometimes on a weekly basis i won't guarantee that but i am adding to it all the time so yeah get involved there's also a community for all my patrons on my facebook page take a look at that as well because you can get involved with that and all my patrons interact with each other and have a lot of fun and I can help critique paintings and work. Not necessarily what I've done on the channel. Have a look. Anyway, I'm rambling on and uh, I enjoyed your company again and um, I'm going to catch each and every one of you next Friday, I hope. Tune in, see what I do next week. Catch you all for now. Bye-bye, guys. Happy painting. See you all soon. Bye-bye.